Okay. Good afternoon, um, everyone. I'm sorry it, uh, I joined in a little bit late, uh, but don't worry. So let's start with uh, our lecture. And we will be starting with unit two today. Um, hello, Akash, so I just joined in. <laughs> there was some technical error, but it's all been sorted out. So good afternoon. Uh, can you not see the PPT? Yes, good afternoon, Dishu. Um, let me just reshare the PPT just a second. Yeah, I hope it's visible now. Yeah. Uh, hello, Shivi, Rohit, Bipul, Muskan, Manshika, Deepak, Kashish, Manat, Kajal. Thank you all for joining in. So uh, we have completed our first unit and we have looked at communication. We have looked at the definitions of communication. Uh, why do we need communication? We looked at in uh, communication in individual context, social context and organizational contexts. And we also looked at the aims and methods of effective communication. Uh, we looked at Hockett's design features that distinguished between human communication and animal communication. We also looked at what is um, what constitutes the flow of communication, um, where we understood uh, who is an uh, encoder or um, who is a receiver or a decoder, uh, a me the medium or the channel that we all use, and the importance of feedback to suggest that the communication has been complete. So I hope uh, the terms of encoder, decoder, uh, are all clear to you, right? Right now, um, would you like to tell me who is the encoder and who is the decoder or the receiver in the communication that we are doing right now? Anyone? Hello, Kanika Muskan. Yeah. So who is the encoder of the message? Yes, hello Kriti, Rupali, Anurag, Kinti, Dipanshu, Simran, Aditya, Rupansh, Nikhil, Sanjay, Kushbu, Julia. Sender is the encoder. All right, Muskan Bansal, very good. Shikha, you are the encoder. Anuradha, Roshan, Poonam. Hello, Kumar Tiwari. You are Rohit, Muskan, decoder is a receiver. Chandni, Archit, Shikha, Rohit. Yes, very well, very good, all of you. Um, okay, Divyansh, Kimti, Krishna, Chetna. Okay, that's very nice. All of you have understood the uh, assignment. Yes, Muskan Mansa, very good. Hello, Jahat, uh, Shiksha, Abdul Qadir, Nikita, Tashan, Shikha, Devit, Chandni. Okay, all right, Gajan. All right, so that's really nice that you have understood the concept. And let's uh, move ahead. Uh, let's start with uh, unit number two. All right. And uh, let me just share the screen. I hope the screen is visible. So we're going to do a lot uh, in this particular unit. Um, so, so let's start. And uh, in today's lecture, we will be looking at intrapersonal, interpersonal group communication, verbal and nonverbal communication, personal, social, and business communication. And like always, I'll tell you, these are the things that you are already aware of. But for the first time, we are theorizing it, all right? So as and when I give examples and when I explain to you, keep on thinking how you're doing it yourself in daily life. How are you communicating intrapersonally or interpersonally, all right? So let's start. So we have 
levels of communication which uh, include extra personal communication intra personal communication interpersonal communication organizational communication and mass communication all right so the first is extra personal communication and let me just make this a little bigger for you just a second the font size is a little small right right so what is this is again let me get my mouse so extra personal communication and interpersonal communication extra personal communication is when human beings interact with non human entities and we often communicate with our pets we communicate with our trees right if you have a lot of trees and you're feeling really sad or depressed and you don't have pets so you'll talk to your trees also right and of course people who have pets whether it's cats kitten uh, dogs whether it's fishes or hamsters or anything so as long as it is a non human entity um with whom you are communicating it is termed as extra personal communication okay then intra intra just look at the uh, word intra intra means inside intra personal communication is intra personal communication happens when we communicate with ourselves which we often do for various reasons like um when we are sad when we are depressed when we want to motivate ourselves right right before giving a very scary speech or you know going to a viva right uh if you perhaps unprepared for it you know like make kind of i could do it right you'll go up to uh, the mirror talk to yourself or it just goes inside your head all the time right or perhaps if you have had a fight with your friend and then you're going back home and then you're thinking you know i should have said something like that main ye bolta to behtar hota something like that right so it what um, what are the examples of intra personal communication um it's silent talk mirror talk um then partner talk or a written uh, self talk or self conversation um when we are perhaps journaling journaling has some becomes uh, quite popular these days right so when we pick up a journal and we you know reflect on the day right we think about what have we done today um what are the things that we need to be generous about what are the things that we need to be grateful sorry not generous grateful about and um, what are the things that perhaps may have triggered us and what are the things we do not want to repeat right so we are thinking about all of that and then we are writing it down then um sometimes you know if we did not prepare for the exam and we like you know what e matter nahi karta hai life is not about exams right so we always tell ourselves we keep on either bringing ourselves down sometimes when we are in a really bad position or we are also you know motivating ourselves to do better and better and we congratulate ourselves when we do something really out of the ordinary so we do a lot of these conversations with ourselves right when we are alone or when we are happy when we are sad when we are depressed so the conversations that we do with ourselves um perhaps in our head or verbally to our own selves by you know perhaps looking at the mirror right so it is interpersonal communication then we have inter inter means kisi do cheez mein right we have inter house competitions we have inter house talent competitions in school we have inter collegiate debate where two colleges take part right so similarly what is inter intra is immediately when it involves other people right involves other human beings so interpersonal communication refers to all communication that we share with other human beings right where the sender and the receiver are two people two humans and uh, different the decoder and the encoder is a different being right so the message that is going to be shared is amongst two people or more right when you're sitting with a group of your friends when you're in a classroom when you're talking to your parents when you're talking to your siblings when you're addressing a crowd 
right uh, so there are a lot of these internal personal communication not a crowd i'm sorry crowd comes and the mass communication but yeah so if you are sitting in a group then definitely when you're communicating with the other member it is going to involve interpersonal communication then like i said uh, organizational communication organizational communication uh, includes uh, when you are working in an office when you are working in an organization when you are working in a formal space all right so whenever i'm looking at these organizational communication interpersonal communication they are all perhaps you know um, umbrella terms where under that also you know you communicate a lot right uh, where you can communicate why is the ppt not visible is the ppt visible to everyone is the ppt visible to everyone harmeet the classes will be uh, posted soon on your dashboard so just uh, keep looking at your swl account um i don't really know the tentative uh, dates when it would be posted or around what time would it be posted uh, but uh, definitely they will be posted yeah it's visible all right okay all right so i just got a message from someone that it's not visible um so if you if the ppt is not visible just um leave the class and then rejoin back all right it's always good to just leave the class and then immediately rejoin okay all right dibanshu okay any any uh, you know any issue regarding uh, video or ppt or voice just uh, leave the class and then rejoin okay so organizational communication <clears throat> organizational communication is which happens in organization right and this includes three types of organization uh, communication the first is intra internal uh, operational within the organization but operational and professional in nature for example we are all part of sol right internal operational will mean me when i'm talking to my colleague right i am in department of english and i'm talking to my colleague in department of english inter operational then external operational with people organizations outside about professional things so i am perhaps talking to someone from english from um, some other university right okay then personal all communication not dealing with operational or professional communication so any kind of communication that i'm doing on my level as part of uh, the sol uh, is going to be personal communication so as part of an organization i'm i'm talking to my colleagues i'm also talking to the people perhaps of english that are working in other different universities too right we have uh, universities across the nation across the country and perhaps i have friends here and there so i would like to share about what i'm teaching you know i can talk to someone perhaps who's teaching english in kerala i'll be talking about you know so this is the aacc web and this is what we are discussing what do you do right what do you teach so that's going to be external operational and then personal of course any kind of communication that i'm i'm doing on my level of being part of an organization right for example if you're working in a com uh, company or you're working in an organization there's a lot you have to talk to your manager about there's a lot you have to talk to your um a lot of things that you need to discuss with your colleague so it's internal operational uh and sometimes you need to hire people from outside of your uh, company perhaps a freelance writer or a freelance photographer or a freelance videographer so that will be external operational you're calling someone who is not part of the company all right and then personal any kind of personal communication that you're doing right you're making notes or you're sending emails or you're doing anything to uh talk um about your work or you know your kind of dealings in the company so it's personal communication that comes under the main umbrella term 
organizational communication all right then you have mass communication what is mass communication when the audience is with a large audience then it is termed as mass communication mediums like newspapers magazines journals books audio visual mediums like radio tv and internet are used to communicate with the masses even musical and theatrical performances uh, cinemas are also forms of mass audio Uh, communication so whenever a thing uh, sorry whenever a video a audio a speech or any kind or form of news is to be told to a large mass of people uh, not something like an office presentation which has only like seven or eight members but more than that hundreds and thousands of people uh, so that is termed as mass communication all right so uh, these are the levels of communication that we looked at extra personal when we are communicating with a non human entity right when we are communicating with our dogs sorry when we coming with the pets basically when we communicating with our pets when we communicating with our trees the trees the plants the nature around us right don't we get up and do all that surya namaskar and all so we try to connect with the nature around us we try to connect with the divinity that is present in the nature right and we talk to ourselves or we feel like we have a kind of a why we are sharing an energy with them right extra personal communication then intra intra personal intra intra is inside under right intra means silent talk mirror talk introspection right um written self talk journaling that we are doing these days question and answer that do we know this kya hame aata hai ye right so when we are writing a paper in an exam we like yeah i studied mere padha to tha ye right so that is intra personal communication inter is immediately when it involves another human being right when it involves other people when you are talking outside of your head right interpersonal then organizational behavior communication when you are part of an organization communication in an office space it has other uh, it has another three levels which include internal operational at the level of the company at the level of the organization then you have external kisi ko bahar se bula liya like a freelance writer freelance photographer so when uh, you're talking to someone that is outside of the company or the organization external operational and you have personal any kind of communication on uh, your own level all right and then of course you have mass communication mass communication includes uh, using newspapers internet tv social media uh journals books magazines newspapers so that a form of communication where you're communicating with hundreds of thousands of people uh, can be termed as mass communication all right then we are moving towards types of communication which can be classified into for into the following kinds which are formal and informal verbal and non verbal oral and written all right so let's have a look at that so types of communication verbal or non verbal communication communication can also be divided into categories like verbal and non verbal verbal communication can happen both orally and written communication it can be both oral and written then non verbal communication includes any communication which is neither oral nor written and it includes mostly uh, such as postures gestures uh, dressing etc all right so let me just uh, zoom it a little bit okay so verbal communication is always going to be whenever we are using words of any kind orally or written and non verbal is going to be whatever we do with our face our gestures remember we talked about what paralinguistic features so that is what we are going to do today all right facial expressions right you know when i'm like what is so when i don't need to say it out loud when i'm just showing you an expression of shock you would know that i am shocked right 
So that is also a point of communication and that is termed as non-verbal communication. All right, so let's move on. What is verbal communication? Verbal communication is language is used according to the established rules of grammar and syntax to communicate emotions and feelings and to share information and meaning. Depending on the way we use words by speaking, by writing, verbal communication is divided into two categories, oral and written. So whenever we are going to use words, whether it is in the form of oral communication or whether it is the form of in written communication, we are always going to follow the set of grammar rules of a language that are given to us. All right, whether we are writing it in Hindi, whether we are writing it in English or whether we are writing in other regional language that we are aware of or unknown, we are going to follow the language rules or grammar or its syntax, right? We, we are speaking, when I'm speaking, I'm going to follow English, right? I'm going to follow the rules of English. I cannot just speak in France, uh, French or I cannot speak in Spanish, right? I cannot jumble my words up. I have to follow a set of rules. So while we are uh, communicating orally, right, like I'm doing right now, or while we are communicating written, um, whether we are sending an email, we are sending a WhatsApp, we are sending, uh, um, what are we, what else are we sending? <laughs> we are sending a message on chat, right, uh, in Microsoft Teams. So we are keeping in mind our language, uh, you know, constraints. Like this is what the language rules are, and we are supposed to follow them. We cannot try like, deviate from them and write whatever we wish. All right. So we are going to follow grammar rules to communicate, whether it is orally or written. Okay, so that's verbal communication. Now, what is oral communication or speech? Okay, oral communication or speech is the more frequently used medium of communication. We can't write to everyone, right? We, we do not have that time perhaps now to write to everyone. Instead of WhatsApping a really long conversation, we just say, can I call you instead and explain to uh, the other person what we are feeling or our situation, right? If we have to give a presentation in our office, we would not write it and give like 50 pages for everyone to read. No, we will speak it out loud and finish it maybe perhaps in an hour. Right. So oral communication or speech is more frequently used. Our daily conversation is primarily oral in its nature. Right. We get up, we say, mommy, I'm up. Right. I am going to breakfast. I'm going to have this. I'm going to eat this. Right. I'm going for a bath. So we do we do not write it out. Right. So oral communication primarily is uh, the medium that we use most of as human beings. There are reasons for it to, to be so. And some of these reasons are we need not be literate to speak as is needed in written communication. All human beings have the competence to speak one or more languages and to achieve it. He or she does not need to be taught in a formal educational environment. Yes, so when we are a baby or when we are growing up, uh, we may not immediately hold a pencil and start writing. No, we've been taught, we are always going to be taught sounds. We are always going to be taught to say, you know, mama, papa, dada and all of that, right? So the first language acquisition um, from our parents is always going to be verbally, right? It's always going to be speech, orally. You know, first we are told to speak and utter sounds, right? We do not just start writing. So one always needs to be literate. Uh, one does not need to be literate. One does not need to be trained in writing, right? You can always speak a language. You can always speak, right? Then you have human beings a born with language acquisition device which disposes them to learn a language when they grow up in a socio cultural environment. A child learns spoken language naturally just by imitating the elders around him or her. We speak more than we write as it is faster and more spontaneous and economical medium of communication. Right? 
so this language acquisition device um what i'm saying is that like i've already told you that when you're growing up as a babe when you're a baby and when you're growing up as a child you will always learn to speak first you won't be able you won't be writing you will always be looking at the people around you and will always be speaking the language that has been spoken around us so a lot of times kids learn things that they do not have to learn but they end up hearing someone speak and they'll immediately learn that right so that is what the thing with speech is you do not need to learn it you do not even need to train how to use it it comes naturally we start picking up around us right then we obviously speak faster right it is a communication that happens more quickly than writing because when we sit down to write we are going to write in a particular way that has been assigned to us by our language rules and grammatical context right we are going to follow the grammar rules we're going to put a uh, in the right position the in the right position right but in speaking we just speak on very fast and we do not really think about the rules so it is more a spontaneous and economical medium of communication then you have non verbal communication which constitutes posture ways of talking sounds closeness appearance body contact head movements facial expressions eye movements and hand movements all right so non verbal communication communicates a lot right and um, we discussed all of this earlier when we were looking at the important terms like kinetics proxemics chronemics haptics parallel language silence and sign language so i did tell you that in the next unit we will be discussing this a little more and these are the things i hope you remember and i hope you get comfortable with so let me just take a break to rest my voice in the meantime just think about what has been taught to you right just uh, have a look at think about the examples of the level of communication for example extra personal intra personal inter organizational and mass communication and um, and then we will look at what constitutes non verbal communication just give me 2 minutes all right yes yes dear uh yes it co communication can be written just a second
Abhinit, organizational communication is when um, you are part of an organization and uh, you are talking to your colleagues or you're talking to uh, your managers. So that is organizational communication and it can be internal, external or external uh, operational uh, or um, it can be personal. Yes, any other questions? OK, verbal communication. Kajal verbal communication can be either written communication or oral communication. Whenever we use words, Whenever we use words to express ourselves, it is called verbal communication. It can either be oral, what we are doing right now, or it can be written, what you are doing, right? So verbal will always involve words, okay? And oral communication is more a spontaneous and economical way of communicating because we speak quickly but when we are writing it it can take a lot of time and when we are writing then we have to be mindful of the grammatical rules right so that is the difference between verbal communication non-verbal communication we'll do right now don't worry neha interpersonal communication is when we are talking to a friend all right so okay now um now tell me what kind of communication are we doing when um, right before the viva you are telling yourself koi baat nahi ho jayega what kind of communication is that is it interpersonal or intrapersonal right before the viva you are telling yourself koi baat nahi ho jayega is it inter or intra Hmm. What kind of communication is it? Intra. Yes. Yes. Akshay, Sakshi, and Dia is right. Thank you, Anushka. Uh, Rohit is right. Muskan, Shivi, Rupanish, Muskan, Aditya, Snehal. Azdak, um, Sonam, Mehal, Ria, Anuradha, Zoya, Shruti, Manish, Poonam, Chandni. Very good, very good. All right. Uh, then when you enter the classroom and you see a friend sitting and you start to talk about your day with her, what kind of communication is that going to be? There's a friend sitting in the classroom and you go up to her and start talking. Is it intra or inter? Yes. You find a friend and you're like, hi, let's talk. <laughs> what is that? Inter, okay. All right. So you reach home, you reach home and your dog comes to the door wagging its tail and you're like, you know what? I had a very bad day. Right? You go to your home, you reach your home, sorry, you reach your home and your dog comes as soon as you open the door wagging its tail and you're like, mm-hmm, kya batao, aaj bada bura din raha. So what kind of communication is that? I 
Azdaq, I'll come back to your uh, question, verbal and oral, just a second. What kind of communication is that? Extra personal, yes, Iman, she is right. Ananya, you're talking to a dog over here, so that's not intra. Um, Shikha, good. Akshay, Sonam, Devansh, Abhinit, Sakshi, Mehal, Chirag, Zoya, Sweetie. Okay, no, not uh, not internal, no. Neha, no. Uh, Shikha, yes. Kimti, good. All right. Uh, Shivi, Ruchi, extra. It's extra. Extra communication. It's not inter. See, so when inter is when you're talking to another person, you're talking to a friend, you're talking to a parent, you're talking to a sibling, you're talking to a teacher, you're talking to anyone on the metro, interpersonal when human beings are involved, right? Extra personal, extra personal is always going to be a non-human entity. A non-human entity, someone who's not a human being, your pets, the trees around you, right? Okay, so that is extra personal. All right. Okay, so I am talking to my manager. What will that be? I have to talk to my manager about some work. So what kind of uh, uh, communication will that be? Akansha extra personal is non-human entity ke saath communicate karna. Wo communication jab aap apne pets ke saath karte ho, aap trees ke saath karte ho, aap sun ke saath karte ho, aap nature ke saath karte ho. That is extra personal. Non-human entities ke saath communication karna, extra personal communication hota hai. Alright, so um, anyway, when you are talking to your boss, when you are talking to your boss, what kind of communication will that be? Yes, it is going to be interpersonal communication, of course. But another term, another term, organizational, good. Yes, Chandni, Chirag, okay, Azak, very good. Shikha, Rupansh, Sonam, Snehal, all right, Muskan, Akash, interoperational, very good, Muskan, Bansal, uh, Hitika, Ruchi, Azak. Priyansh, uh, Sonam, okay, Shivam, Anuradha, uh, Sweetie, Rohit Kapoor, very good, Poonam Sharma, nice, um, all right, okay, okay, all right, and the Prime Minister has to address the nation on Republic Day on 26 January, so what kind of communication will that be? The Prime Minister is going to address the nation on 26 January, the Republic Day, right? So what kind of communication is that going to be like? The Prime Minister addressing the nation on 26 January, the Republic Day. The Prime Minister, what kind of communication will be the Prime Minister addressing the nation on the Republic Day? Mass communication. Okay. Very good, Sneha, Lakansha, Zoya, Chirag, Shivi, Shubh, Shubh, uh, Divanshi, Divanshi Gupta, Maskan, Kashika, Shivam, Poonam, Aditya. Uh, Srishti, Sanket, Dia, Manish. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so you've got the idea about uh, the levels of communication, all right? Extra, inter, intra, organizational, internal, external, internal, operational, and personal, then mass communication. Okay, so that's clear. Then we moved on to verbal and non-verbal communication. In verbal communication, we talked about oral communication and written communication. Verbal se hi samjhe, verbal is when you involve words, when words are being spoken or written to communicate. All right, verbal can both be speaking, like what I'm doing right now, or you writing in the chat box, okay? But we always prefer verbal, because it is easier, it is quicker. All right. 
So, and you do not need to be literate, as in you do not need to be trained how to hold a pen or a pencil and write and follow the grammatical rules, right? So it comes easier or quicker to us, all right? So that's verbal communication. What you are doing is also verbal communication. What I am doing is also verbal communication. What I'm doing is oral communication and you are doing written communication. Now let's move on to non-verbal communication, okay? All right, so just a second. Nonverbal communication in case no words are exchanged. Sorry. In case no words are exchanged, yet communication happens. We can also communicate through our body language, which is a nonverbal communication. It is perceived that nonverbal cues forms a part form a major part of communication process. That's almost 93%. Therefore, it is significant that we focus our attention to this aspect of communication. The nonverbal cues are kinesics, proxemics, chronomics, haptics, paralanguage, and silence and sign language. All right. So um, Kinesics. So keep looking at the diagram over here. Kinesics is the study of body's physical movements for the purpose of communication. That is the way our body communicates without words through various movements of its part. For example, nodding one's head communicates acceptance. Some body movements during communication are conscious, whereas others we do are unconscious. The unconscious body movements are very significant pointers in, interrupt in interpreting messages. For example, you know, we go like, are we like, or we come like, you know, we do this or we do this for water. And we go like, hmm. so that is all kinesics. Kinesics is the study of bodies, physical movements. How are we using our body? Like, you know, we just go like, and we look at a friend and we just go like this. So it means we're going to hug, right? So uh, then we go, like, hmm. so there's a lot of these things that we do in our daily basis while communicating with the people around us. So bodies, physical movements for the purpose of communication Communication is called kinesics. You have to remember these terms. All right, kinesics. Okay, then you have kinesics. So, sorry. Personal appearance, our first impression matters a lot before someone starts communicating. Other forms an opinion, others forms an opinion about her or him just by perceiving how the person is trying to present herself or himself. Appearance includes clothes, hair, accessories, and cosmetics, and so on. In today's context, the purpose of clothing has changed from fulfilling a basic need to expressing oneself. Posture, right? Posture refers to the way we hold ourselves when we stand, sit, walk, talk, or choose not to talk. Our postures change according to circumstances. When one is nervous, one usually starts fidgeting with something or like, you know, mobile phones. Gestures are movements made by hands, head, or face. And appropriate gestures supplement verbal communication and also communication in its own right. And facial expressions. Facial expressions communicate to the receiver the intent of the message and eye contact are often our eyes communicate better than the words we utter words become more powerful when the speaker makes eye contact with the listener receiver or the message so in kinesics just remember when we are going to an interview there's a lot of things that goes around in our heads right what are the kind of clothes that we are going to wear um, and if a question is asked which we are not sure about how we're going to answer we suddenly go like oh god yeah, we, we suddenly, you know, develop this sense of, uh, you know, nervousness and then we go like we'll fidget, uh, you know, we'll start moving our hands, we'll touch our hair, we'll touch our mobile phone. So a lot of these things, just remember in an interview, we all suddenly become, uh, become aware of our facial expressions, our clothing, our um, 
hand movement our gestures our facial expressions but even in our daily life we are doing all of that right we this is all part of us communicating right so just keep in mind how personal appearance whether it's clothing whether it's the kind of makeup that we are wearing the posture that we are holding uh, the gestures that we are doing our facial expressions and our eye contact how much it means uh, to communicate how important it is while we are communicating right so that constitutes kindness six all right then we move, move on to proxemix now just remember when we use the word proximity what do we mean ki uske proximity mein kya hai as well campus ke there are the, the metro station right the metro station is there and there is there are other colleges then you have you know you have khalsa college and you go to miranda house so i'm sure you have been to the campus right so you know this is what we say right you know us college ke proximity kya hai ye 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 cheez hai jab when we call uh, when we tell the zomato the swiggy guy that you know what you have to come to our house uh, ek tree khada hua hai lamba sa mango ka tree hai then you can come here so when we whenever we talking about proximity uh, proximity we are talking about distance look at the word and understand that all right so when we are talking about proximity we are talking about distance and here the term is proximix now what does proximix mean space or lack of it between the sender and the receiver of the message also speaks volumes when one hugs someone though no words are exchanged but the warmth of the relationship can be felt by both this is communication the study of physical space in interpersonal relationships is called proximix and you can see over here for intimate it is 0 to 50 for personal 0 to 51 social 1 to 4 and public 4 meters or more so proximix is something like when you are entering a classroom right your best friend is sitting now if your best friend is sitting you will immediately go and perhaps hug her right and you will sit next to her right it it doesn't mean if your shoulders are touching or your body is touching you're quite comfortable and that is an intimate space that you share with people that are very close to you right and then you have other classmates you have almost 40 or 40 plus classmates you're not comfortable with that kind of intimacy with everyone right so for the, uh, another classmate you are perhaps sitting at a distance okay that communicates the kind of comfort factor that you have with other people who are not close to you right then your teacher enters right and your teacher will always be at a distance from the students because it is a professional space you are learners and she is there to perform a task that is deliver a lecture right so again between the first desk and the blackboard there is a space okay and that that space suddenly gives you that sense that you need to respect this person there is a distance between you a divide between a teacher and a student right and then there is of course public for example when a prime minister is addressing the nation and you can see the huge divide right you can see the huge divide between the stage and the people who are sitting right a when a a political rally is happening you can see the huge distance because it is a public uh, you know uh, uh, communication that's happening so the person does not know everyone right when a musical concert is happening the singer won't know everyone in the audience right so there is a distance so when you're talking to your manager you cannot freely just go him hug him and all of that no you are supposed to maintain a distance you're supposed to sit on the other side of the table there's a distance but with your friends you can hug them uh, shake hands with them sit close to them right you can do all of that so space is very important in communicating the more close the person is to you the more close he can come to your body right in terms of a distance right uh, so there is intimate there is personal there is social and there is uh, space so we have discussed kindness six proximix yahan se distance aata hai right and uh, intimate personal social and public then uh, you have 
chronomics now what is chronomics chronomics is how we manage our time communicates a lot about the kind of person we are the study of the use of time to communicate uh, to communicate is known as chronomics in the professional world time is a valuable resource when we are late for an appointment people react negatively sorry if we arrive early we are considered over eager now chronomics again comes uh, from the word chronomic uh, when we are, uh, does not come from the word chronomics i'm sorry this is another word that we use chronology right chronology kya hota hai ki when we ask you to write the chronology of you know uh, the development of perhaps um, you know, the chronology of uh, the mobile phone the mobile phone how did it come about right so we'll start talking about we'll start talking about the really thick mobile phone so we together as 3310s and then we switched on to those tiny ones with really bad cameras right you know 2 megapixel 5 megapixel and all of that and now we have these really cool smartphones that have touch features and all of that so when we're talking about chronology we're talking about time right how are we listing it right so again Uh, from that word the idea of time you should call, talk about you should think about that and refer it over here and then you will understand ki chronomics kya hota what is chronomics chronomics is for example you have been called for an interview at 9 o'clock and you reach at 8:30 or 8 o'clock to show how over eager you are you know you really need that position no you know you can't do that and you can't reach at 10 o'clock for your 8:30 interview because you have to be on time time is very important your lecture starts at 3 o'clock you cannot come and join the class at 3:50 Or 355 saying that oh my god ma'am I missed the lecture no you cannot do that right because time is important and it shows how much you care about the position how much you care about your studies how much you care about the thing that you are doing so you, chronomics is the study of time in communication. right in in a professional organization how are we managing time what does it communicate when the presentation your presentation is 9 o'clock your manager and your colleagues are waiting in the boardroom you have to present at 9 o'clock you cannot do it at 10 o'clock right what will it show it will show that perhaps you were unprepared perhaps you did not uh, you know you weren't mindful of the time of others you are wasting the time so it does not ref, uh, it does not look good on your part all right so chronomics then you have haptics haptics is the language of touch okay we also communicate with our sense of touch which is known as haptics the way we communicate by our physical contact or by touching the other person is known as haptics now whether it is kissing whether it is slapping shaking hands or we have haptics so when we are hugging when we when we, we talked about proximity how close we are to the person are we intimate or are we social are we personal or are we you know communicating publicly in, uh, in a form of like a mass communication so uh if we are personal or if you are having any, any kind of inter communication um interpersonal communication haptics uh can be you know talked about over there when we meet someone who may not be close to us but we shake hands right and is it a firm handshake or it's a, like a very uh, awkward handshake and then we get a pat on our backs then we hug how are we hugging is it a good hug or it is just like ha ha it's okay all right then uh, how are we sitting with our friend with a with a shoulder around his uh, you know um, shoulder blade of course so how are we doing that so that's the language of touch how are you communicating through the power of touch okay that's haptics then you have sorry then you have para language okay a term that has been concerning all of you for a really long time para language is the way a meaning is conveyed but how we say things while speaking when a telephone bell rings and you pick up the receiver and hear the word hello it is it not only greets you but also tells you about the gender of the person right the voice is someone familiar and the social linguistic and educational background of the person calling all these are not contained in the word hello 
but are manifest in the way the word is spoken. Para language consists of various aspects. Vocalization of words, there are different dimensions on it based on volume variation, speed of speaking, uh, pauses, word stresses, inflections, and non fluencies. All right. Uh, so the point is, for example, you know, sometimes that we say that, uh, for example, someone has just talked to you and then you say that I did not like the way he spoke to me or I did not like the way she spoke to me. And even though they have given us the information, we know that somehow he either insulted us or she either insulted us because the way it was spoken. All right, the way the tone, sometimes the tone can be really uh, loud. Sometimes the tone can be really condescending, right? It can bring you down, like you're feeling it can bring you down. So that is para language that, you know, when we understand that the tone is somehow off, that the tone is either telling us down or the tone is very angry or um, sometimes it happens that, you know, perhaps you're very nervous during a viva and you go like, um, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So again, these inflections or these non fluencies that we do, non fluencies are these um, uh, huh, hmm. that the, those are all non fluencies. And inflections are then we add like, uh, okay, all right. So we do this, right? We don't sometimes we stress a little bit. So, so, uh, so even when we're doing like, you know, what. Uh, it's like, are you okay? So when we do that, it can mean, are you okay in a sarcastic manner also? So are you okay? So we do that uh, to show that, you know, we don't really care, but we are simply just asking. So those are the things that you need to understand while communicating. All right. Uh, so we have a lot of these. Uh, sorry, just a second. Yeah, sorry, the video just went. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of these things in communicating that we need to be mindful about. The volume variation. How are we speaking very slowly? Are we speaking very loudly? The speed of our speaking, if we have really nervous, we'll speak really fast. And the pauses are the word stress. Okay, so this is all part of para language. And lastly, we have we have sign language. Sign language is the last form of non-verbal communication. And now sign language refers to symbols which are commonly used within a particular community or communicative group to mean something that is constant for all members of that community. For example, traffic signals or signs or symbols that are common all over the world. These signs are abstractions which people agree on the meanings to make it work. Other examples of sign include road sign, uh, signals, graphs, maps, alarm sirens and you have audio signs visual signs and audio visual signs for example audio signs are whenever you're you're sitting in a tra traffic and you hear ambulance uh, you hear it a ten -na 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 of ambulance that's an audio sign and suddenly get aware of it and you suddenly start to move your car to give way to the ambulance and if you hear the police um the the police uh, man also has a particular sound the fire engine has a particular sound so these are all audio signs and then you have um, uh, this uh, so, sorry these are all uh, yeah audio signs then you have visual signs visual signs is when you're sitting in a plane and then they tell you to buckle your uh, you know, belt, you can see that over there written. So you need to buckle your belt. And then, of course, you have audio visual signs, audio video, visual signs are when you're in the metro. When you're in the metro and they say ki da bai haat, dai haat, da darwaza khulega and whatever. And then you get that ting. And so it's audio, it's telling you ki bai haat, ka dai haat, ka darwaza khulega. And then you get that ting. So you know which side you're going to be on, which side uh, of the metro. Uh, gate you're supposed to stand on so you can leave. All right. So these are again non-verbal signs. TK. These are all signs. Sometimes it uh, even if they don't tell you ki hat ka darwaza ka, bai hat ka darwaza ka, you just get up and stand there and you know this is the darwaza that's going to open eventually and you can hear that you can see that. All right. So that is audio visual. 
all right when it's just telling you sometimes it, it does not even need to tell you uh, like for example if you go to a shopping center or a mall it will be written enter so you're not hearing someone say because in the metro if if someone is speaking that is oral communication but what is the lights light up that is non verbal communication so if you're going and you just see enter written and perhaps an audio sign of ting when it goes like when you enter that's an audio visual sign all right so this is what we um, looked at today we looked at verbal communication and we looked at non verbal communication okay so i hope um, today whatever what uh, whatever was discussed sorry whatever was discussed it was clear right today in the class we looked at uh, the different levels of communication where we discussed extra personal intra personal interpersonal organizational and mass communication then we looked at types of communication where we looked at formal and informal verbal and non verbal and oral and written we looked at verbal communication we looked at oral communication or speech and we looked at non verbal communication in non verbal communication we looked at the idea of uh, sorry just a second kinetics then we looked at proxemics we looked at chronemics we looked at haptics we looked at parallel language and we looked at sign language okay so these are the things that we discussed in the class today if there is any issue we'll of course discuss it in the next class yeah sanjay and so audio sound phone it yes sanjay for example like you know um we get a whatsapp message and we get that ting or a i don't know what <laughs> sound the mobile phone makes your mobile phone makes so we know that we get a message so that's an audio um audio sign okay that's an audio sign we suddenly know we get a message and you know for example if you're using snapchat uh, and if you get a snap it has a different sound it has a different sound so you know you've got a snap so that's an audio sign right so yeah srishti uh, you can you can you can get that particular book um i have already told you that by the end of the lectures i'll provide you the material and the textbook and everything so if you want to get the textbook right now it's good all good you can get it absolutely see as there are a lot of these uh, new uh, books textbooks just keep in mind if the textbook that you are buying has delhi university aecc syllabus written on it as long as it follows the delhi university aecc syllabus you can buy the book all right as long as it follows the prescribed syllabus you can buy the book all right and um, okay so what is visual sign visual signs uh, like i've said when you are going to a mall or when you go in any place you can see enter and exit written enter and exit or um, visual sign sorry not enter and exit again that's a written communication that is written it's using words i'm sorry visual communication is when you are sitting in a plane when you're sitting in a plane and there's this diagram this is this diagram that uh, shows you that you know you put your belt or you need to take off your belt it's the right time to take off your belt um visual sign can be for example the no smoking sign uh the enter and exit is a written sign i'm sorry i completely forgot um the other uh, the, the smoking sign that the no smoking sign that you see or the toxic sign that you see of like a skeleton right and with this thing line across it so you have um, no smoking signs you have the traffic sign that's another visual sign if you see the red light blinking or the green light blinking you know what are you supposed to do so that's a visual sign okay i hope that's clear um what is silences and pauses shivam when i'm talking for example i go like mm. so either i'm thinking so either i'm thinking or i am making very sure that whatever i'm speaking uh, 
isn't going to you know like for example someone is really particular about how is he going to tell you something so he will pause right and you'll be like why is he pausing that much right you will wonder either you don't know the answer that's why you're pausing or you're going to pause because you're making sure that the what whatever that you're speaking it is correct or not so that is why silences and pauses are important sign for saying it's a speed breaker yes vishali very good traffic signs are visual signs yes aditya very good there you see a speed breaker yes very good vishali anshika para language is like i've said it is inflections it is the mm, the er uh, the tone how how loudly you are speaking how slowly you are speaking the speed how quickly you are speaking that is all part of para language um mass communication lakshmi is any kind of communication that you are doing on uh, you know that you are using mediums like uh, newspaper television journals tv internet social media to communicate with a lot of people to communicate with hundreds and thousands of millions of people that is kind of mass communication okay uh, neha para language like i've talked about sounds noise tones uh tone your inflections you know influences that constitutes bad language all right so students what uh, can be done right now because we are running out of time and we have completed all of the topics that we were supposed to discuss uh for uh, we have started unit number 2 so lecture number 1 is done and we'll meet in uh, lecture number 2 for unit 2 okay so uh what you can do is you can think about more examples you can think about more examples for written communication verbal communication oral communication uh, for levels of communication for paralingual paralinguistic features you can talk about you can think about examples for haptics phonemics etc all right so i leave you and you can think thank you thank you anshika and uh, the like i've said as long as the book follows the prescribed uh, syllabus of delhi university you can get the book okay um so i hope that answers your question all right and like i've said i will provide you with all the material don't worry it is there on the sol site you can go to sol uh, the website and download the material from there too okay so i'll leave you and i'll see you in the next class bye bye and good afternoon